Hi, Mimi. Water Agency regular meeting. Um, today is September 19th, 2022, and I'm calling this meeting to order. Uh, the time is now 4.01 p.m. Um, this meeting is being conducted pursuant to the provisions. Of, actually, are we recording? Thank you, Chair. I'll ask uh, our IT folks just to give me a thumbs up to let me know that we've begun recording. Okay, Chair, we're ready. Okay, good. If you would you like me to read that uh, into the uh, record one more time, just to make sure. That'd be great. Okay, I'll do that one more time. Practice makes perfect. Welcome to the Port Wyneme Water Agency regular meeting. Um, I'm calling this meeting to order. Uh, the time is now 4.02 p.m. and the date is September 19th, 2022. Uh, this meeting is being conducted pursuant to the provisions of Government Code Section 54953, Subdivision E, uh, and the recommendation of the Ventura County Health Officer issued September 21st, 2021, following social distancing recommendations. Um, Madam Clerk, could you please take roll for today? Member Bouchard? Here. Member Perez? Here. Member Rollins. Here. Um, Vice Chair Hernandez, um, I believe it still hasn't joined the meeting yet. And Chair Debley. Here. Um, we will now hear any general public comments not pertaining to items on the agenda for today, including those written comments received by our clerk. Any comments from those who are participating live with us this evening, uh, we'd like to ask that you use Zoom's raise your hand feature so we can call on you during the appropriate comment times. This will be the same process for comments pertaining to each agenda item as well. Staff will unmute your mic and you'll have three minutes to provide your comments. Um, does anyone have any public comments for tonight? Hearing none, were, did we receive any written uh, comments for today's meeting? No, we did not. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, moving on, um, may I have a motion and a second to approve tonight's agenda? Move to approve. Second. So we have a first from Chair Rollins and a second from Ms. Perez, actually, um, could you, Madam Clerk, could you take roll for tonight? Member Bouchard? Yes. Member Perez? Yes. Member Rollins? Here. And Chair Debley? Yes. Um, we will now consider items on the consent calendar, which will be in, enacted in one motion unless the agency member has a request to remove an item for discussion. Um, may I have a motion and a second to approve, approve the consent calendar? Move to approve. Second. second. <laughs> so, um, Ms. Perez, move to approve. Okay. And the second, was that Jared or? I think it was Rich. It can be Jared. Uh, I will second it. That's fine. All right, thank you. <laughs> Could I please have a roll on this one as well? Member Perez? Yes. Member Bouchard? Yes. Member Rollins? Yes. Chair Debley? Yes. Um, moving right along, uh, tonight we do not have any public hearings. Uh, so we will move on to business items. Uh, we have uh, item four, which is the Brackish Water Reclamation Demonstration Facility Operational Report. Um, I believe that um, Director Villafana will present the staff report. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chair Debley and uh, board members. This is the uh, uh, Brackish Water Report, <coughs> excuse me, for uh, the month of July and August. Uh, the plant was uh, operated for the entire month of July, and our demand for July was 3.231 million gallons per day, which was slightly more than June. June of this year was 3.175 million gallons per day. 
And of course, our silt in, uh, density index has allowed us to operate the membranes continuously through the month of July. Uh, in the month of August, the plant operated the entire month. Again, our silt density indexes were within the with range to allow the use of the membranes. Our demand for the month of August was 3.351 million gallons per day, which was slightly higher than July of this year. July again was 3.231 million gallons. Last August, our plant operated the entire month and um, our demand was 3.498 million gallons per day. So uh, last July, we used 352,000 gallons per day more water than we used this July. And this August, um, um, you know, which means this August, this August we used less water. And last, uh, last uh, or last July, we used uh, more water than this July. This August, um, we used um, less water than last August. Last August, we used um, 147,000 uh, gallons per day more. So we're trending in the right direction. And um, with respect to our water supply, uh, the um, for the month of uh, August, United Water supplied approximately 79% of our water and United Water, uh, or Cayugas supplied approximately 21% of our water. Uh, yeah, that, that was for July. In August, uh, United Water District supplied approximately 83% and Cayugas supplied approximately 17%. So um, that's staying within what our traditionally our uh, split is for water usage. We have um, our water supply allocation to date. Uh, United Water, we've used 2,142 2, acre feet or 59% of our allocation from United. And from Cayugas, uh, we've used 37% uh, of our allocation so, um, you know, we're within the range. And uh, right now we're averaging approximately um, 12, a little over 12 million uh, acre feet a day uh, per demand. And as we go into the uh, cooler months, hopefully that'll go down. And uh, we, we're going to be well within our allocations for both United and for Cayugas. Are there any questions? Yeah, I had one. Um, member Rollins. So just so I understand the logic behind it, um, we're using less water than we did last year, um, but we're still using about the same percentage of water from Cayugas. And I know Cayugas water is more expensive. Why wouldn't we be using less Cayugas because we're not using as much water and just depending more on United Water? Uh, there, um, the demand ebbs and flows, and we can only get so much water from United at one time. Okay. During higher demands is when we draw on the Cayugas water. I see. Okay. Any other questions? Oh. Member Perez, you had a question? Yes. I was curious, with all the uh, drought restrictions that we've had in place for some time, is there any data to show whether that has helped um, reduce our water intake for the city? Well, we are, you know, we are uh, using less water than we did last year for both periods. So I believe it is. Um, we have not um, checked all the water usage. That is something that uh, I can ask uh, our administrative staff to kind of uh, spot check and see, you know, what overall demand is, but we are using less water, which is good. And, uh, it is trending downward. Do we have, when the drought um, demand or mandate was put in place, was there a certain specific amount that was given to each city or each region that they had to try to remain under, or it was just reduce the amount you're using, no specific amount? They're trying to reduce 15% across the board. And so um, also, um, as we go into October, 
the now PHWA you know, it consists of the Navy, the Beach District, and of course the City of Port Wyneme. And the City of Port Wyneme, I took uh, a resolution to the Council which moved us to a level two drought uh, condition. And you see the uh, the message boards, as did the City of Oxnard and the Beach District. Uh, as part of our ordinance, right now, uh, people can water twice a week with irrigation systems, sprinkler systems. Uh, later in October and certainly in November, our ordinance requires that they they cut back to one day a week for watering. And I will be um, taking um, informational packet to the city council just to inform that. And we'll be putting that information out on social media and changing our message boards because right now we have our message boards that say uh, irrigate watering uh, restricted to Wednesday and Saturdays. That will be uh, cut down to one day a week. Now there is no restriction to water by hand or with a bucket. Those you can do that. This is with irrigation systems. Thank you. Member Rollins, you had another question? Yeah, no, just a statement. Uh, I wanted to commend the uh, city and the public works because as I've drive, driven through the city, I've noticed that they have a lot of different signs throughout the city encouraging people to be aware that we have a water shortage and to cut down. So I think that's a good messaging. Thank you. Um, are there any public comments regarding this agenda item? No, there are not. Okay, great, thank you. Are there any other comments from uh, any of the members of the agency? Hearing none, we will move on. Um, if we could have a motion to receive and file this report. Move to, to receive it. Move to receive and file. So we have a motion from Member Bouchard and a second. Second. Great, thank you. Can we have a vote, please? Member Bouchard? Yes. Member Rollins? Yes. Member Perez? Yes. And Chair Debley? Yes. Okay, uh, moving on to business item number five, uh, which is a gray water discussion and presentation by Director Villafont. Uh, may I have, uh, be allowed to share the screen here? Yeah, you should have privileges. Okay, thank you. All right, I have a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation here. Um, the board asked to come back and give some information on gray water, and that's what this brief presentation is tonight. What is gray water? Gray water, by definition from the California Building uh, Plumbing Code, is untreated wastewater that has not come into contact with toilet waste, kitchen sink waste, dishwasher waste, or similarly contaminated sources. Gray water includes wastewater from bathtubs, showers, lavatories, clothes washers, and laundry tubs. The collection of gray water enables you to reuse some of the water you use every day inside your home. Gray water is the reusable water coming from sinks, showers, washing machines. It contrasts with black water from sources, sources such as toilets, dishwashers, which cannot be reused without on-site treatment. Do I need a permit to have a gray water system? A residential gray water system known as an LGDS is exempt from construction and or plumbing permits provided it meets the California Plumbing Code, chapter 15, section 1503.1.1 and provided you follow the guidelines for the installation and use of an LGDS. What is a laundry gray water disposal system? An LGDS is a gray water system utilizing a single domestic clothes washing machine in a one or two family dwelling. It does not require a plumbing permit, provided the system does not require the cutting of the existing plumbing piping. An LGDS is exempt from construction or plumbing permits provided it meets the California Plumbing Code Chapter 15, Section 1503. 
This is an example of a residential gray water system, a system designed to collect gray water on site for reuse or distribution to an irrigation or uh, dispersal field. The important thing here is it has to go, it cannot be deposited directly on the surface. If you look at the, uh, at the diagram, you can see where it actually goes underneath some mulch. You have to have the, the you can connect a hose and it could go to a, um, a basin around a tree as long as there are two inches of mulch above the, the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the hose outlet. And that's the key. And in this, you can see where it says a minimum of two inches of mulch. All right. What plants should I avoid watering with gray water? There are a significant amount of information available on this topic. However, as a general rule of thumb, gray water should not be used to irrigate food crops, but is okay to irrigate trees and shrubs. The one thing too, is if you do use gray water from your washing machine, you're gonna to wanna to use uh, biodegradable detergents and minimize the amount of bleach because that's harmful to some of the plants. You also should still water these same plants that you're watering with gray water, occasionally with um, regular potable water because uh, of the additional minerals and possible uh, salts that are coming out when you're using your gray water. What if I want to install a more complex gray water system that includes more than just my washing machine? If you exceed the guidelines of the LGDS, your system will require permits and plans to be submitted to the city of Port Wayneme Building and Safety Department. Are there any questions? Member Rollins, you have a question, you're muted. Yeah, I, I for the simple gray water system, you don't need a permit, but there's a lot of um, guidelines and rules as to how you put it in and stuff like that. How do you know that you've done it the right way unless you have a permit or someone tells you? We, we can put, I mean, this really falls under the realm of uh, community development and building and safety. Typically, in the county of Ventura, the county of Ventura has handouts uh, from their building department showing how to do a gray water system like this without a permit. Um, building and safety and community development would need to put something like this on their website to show it, or possibly um, if, if you know, we could, Public Works can put it on our website, and we could put we could put it on the city website and have a link. Uh, those are some options that we could do so that people interested in a gray water system could come to the uh, the city website and see the information. I think that would be a great idea. Okay. That's, all, that's all my comments. Uh, Member Press? I have a silly question. Why is dishwater water considered black water even though it heats up and it would assume to be cleaner than regular sink water, but sink water is considered gray water. Okay, sink water from a lavatory that doesn't have food waste in it. It's the food waste that it, it, it becomes into um, insert, can, uh, considered by the plumbing code to become uh, non-gray water or black water. That's a determination uh, from the, uh, the plumbing code, but you could have it's the food waste in there that, that makes it that way. Got it. Thank you. And, and Director Villafana, correct me if I'm wrong, but it has to do also with the fats, oils, and greases that you're going to have in in dishwater versus a, a lab sink. That's correct. That is, you, you will have oils and other things in the dishwasher discharge. Are, are there any other questions at this time? And did we receive any questions from uh, members of the public on this item? No public comment. Great, thank you. Um, are there any comments from uh, agency members at this time? None. Yeah, I, I, I have just a comment, um, kind of maybe a little bit of a question. 
um, for Director Villafana. Are, are, are you seeing with um, commercial de developments that, you know, we have gray water systems that uh, apply to residential um, uh, developments, but on the commercial side, are you, are, are you hearing or seeing any dual plums buildings where they're actually repurposing the sink water for toilets and stuff like that? Or um, is that something that the city might be moving towards um, in the future? As a well, that would really be, uh, if it's in the building, it would be under community development, building and safety. And since the city is pretty well built out, it's not like we have new development where you're conditioned to put in the purple lines for recycled water. That would be in a new development or a new housing tract. Um, for some I reason, think, the, the cannabis side of things came into my mind, so I was <laughs> kind of thinking in, the, in, in that arena, but uh, no, that makes sense. Yeah. What I may suggest is that if, if uh, it's the consensus of the uh, board, I can modify this uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation and put it on the city website with a link, because I think this gives uh, some good information that the public uh, may be interested in uh, in looking at. No. Uh, Member Bouchard? Sorry, I just had a, a question for, for Don that kind of struck me. Um, it, in your research on this, um, and I, I'm, I'm dragging up my historical memory of it, is this a suggest that you can't collect gray water in a cistern or a barrel and then if you meet these application standards could you then put it out or or is, is would that be an illegal collection of that water uh if you were to collect it in a cistern or, or is it be the plumbing code research piece i guess uh it's contrary to the plumbing code at this time to collect it in a cistern and then distribute it. Do people do it? Probably, uh, and disperse it. But again, the, the big thing is that you don't uh, disperse the water directly on the surface. It's supposed to go below uh, a minimum of two inches of mulch and uh, into a leach line system if you're putting it into a, a lawn. Thank you. Great. Okay. Um, moving on. Other questions? Yeah. Do we have any other questions or comments at this time? No. Good information. Hearing none, we'll move on to item six, which is the renewal and reconsideration of remote meetings pursuant to government code 54953E. Um, I believe. Um, Mr. Spaulding will be providing the staff report on this or the uh, information on this again. I will indeed, Chair Dudley. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I am recovering from COVID that I got in Hawaii, uh, <laughs> as I hear you recently there, <laughs> although I am not asymptomatic. Um, as the board is, is well aware, uh, Governor Newsom on March 4th, 2020, declared a state of emergency relating to the COVID-19 pandemic. And the state legislature be obligating many local agencies as well as the state legislature to meet remotely to enforce social distancing. Uh, the state legislature passed AB 361, which requires local agencies to make a number of findings in order to continue meeting remotely. Among those findings are that the state of emergency continues to directly impact the ability of members to meet safely in person or <clears throat> state or local officials continue to impose or recommend measures to promote social distancing. As it stands now, the March 4th, 2020 proclamation of emergency remains in effect, and the Ventura County Public Health Officer continues to recommend social distancing measures to contain the spread of COVID-19. <clears throat> At the time of the staff report that the PHWA board was issued, uh, the numbers for Ventura County were, were falling. Uh, they had risen around the time of June 6th, and there were yeah, an average of about 371 daily positive cases. For the week prior to the staff report, uh, those numbers for 
the week prior to this meeting, those numbers have not gone above 150 as I think my last reading with numbers falling below 100 consistently up until the date of today's meeting. So any action that would be taken by the board tonight, I would request that one, they ratify this meeting as we are outside the, the 30 days required for AB 361. So approve remote meeting for this meeting and then make a determination as to whether or not the board would rather would continue meeting remotely based on those two findings, which are that the ability of the members to meet publicly uh, is <coughs> endangers their safety or that state or local officials continue to recommend social distancing measures to contain the spread of COVID-19. And with that, I yield to any questions of the board. Are there any questions for Mr. Spalding on this one? No, I'd be prepared to uh, make a motion that uh, ratifies this meeting to be covered under the remote meeting teleconferencing uh, program and find that state and local uh, officials are still recommending social distancing and that we would uh, adopt the uh, resolution as presented to for continued uh, the ability to continue to meet remotely. I would second that. Great, thank you. Um, so we have a motion from uh, Mr. Bouchard and a second from Mr. Rawlings, Madam Clerk, we'd have a roll call vote on this item, please. Member Bouchard? Yes. Member Rollins? Yes. Member Perez? Yes. And Chair Depley? Yes. So moving right along, um, next um, topic on the agenda for tonight is board members' reports, comments, and requests for future agenda items. I'd like to remind agency members that all requested items will require a motion, a second, and a majority vote to be placed on a future agenda. Uh, does anyone have any requests for future agenda items at this time? I would like to just revisit, and maybe if I got to make the motion again, that uh, I believe that it was voted on three meetings ago uh, for a future agenda item. And I know it, if, if, if staff's working on bringing it back, I apologize but uh, that we engage in some sort of workshop or long-term uh, strategic planning for the agency to uh, understand where we're, where we're going in the next 10 years as we've got a lot of capital improvements as part of a master plan to be asked to expend funds on. Um, so uh, uh, my request would be that we engage in some sort of strategic planning uh, effort at this agency level. I'd like to see that as a future agenda item. Yeah, I would second to reinforce that. I remember when you made that motion. Okay, um, can we have a vote on this uh, just, item, please? <clears throat> Chair, excuse me. I, I'll just note if, the, if it's the pleasure of the board members, feel free to take a vote. Um, that is an action that was recorded uh, and staff does it ha have it on a list, so it's not necessary, but if it is the pleasure of the board, feel free to uh, vote and we can record that as well. Yeah, I'd withdraw it as long as it's on the docket. Um, maybe uh, at the next meeting, you can make a report as to what the timeline might be when we would hear it. Uh, very good. I'll put something together timeline-wise for the uh, October meeting. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Um, are there any other requests for future items? Hearing none, um, I'd like to adjourn the meeting for tonight. Uh, the time is now 4.30 p.m. Uh, the next regular meeting is scheduled for Monday, October 17th, 2022 um, at 4 p.m. Um, I will not be at that meeting. Uh, actually, I take that back. I will be at that meeting. I won't be at the November meeting. So, um, but uh, anyhow, thank you all for your participati participation tonight and um, have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Good night. Thank you all. Enjoy. Have a good